I've been working with JavaScript for a very long time and there are only a handful of things not to brag which can make me go, oh shit, was this possible with JavaScript? Party Town, which is a library, does something interesting and something weird which you would not expect when you see it on the first go. Let's take a look at what this library is and what this does. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. Okay, let's take a look at what Party Down library is and how this works. So. If you understand about JavaScript and scripts, the third party scripts which you inject, for example, Google Analytics is one, there could be Amplitude, Mixpanel, and so on. So all of these softwares, these are actually tracking software from some sorts, right? For analytics and data and stuff like that. There could be another category of JavaScript which you're running, which might not be that important, right? So these softwares are not important, not critical what does this mean this means that they are not critical to the functioning of your app so even if they are running a little bit throttled or a little slower it wouldn't matter but it will be great if they don't run at main thread at all now let me just back it this up real quick what do i mean by that so when you visit a website let's say codedam.com the moment you hit enter there's a thread there is a single thread known as ui thread you can call it a UI thread. And this is the place where everything is happening with the rendering part, right? So the website which you see, whenever you click on a button, the navigation which happens when you're writing in a text area, all those events are executing on this main UI thread. And the JavaScript, the .js file which you write, that also runs on the same thread. This means that if you're running a piece of JavaScript code on this thread, and at the same time, there is some user action, like a click or a scroll or a, you know, input type event, or a key press, anything which involves user, if your JavaScript is running at that time, the user input would be delayed. That would mean the user would see lag on your website or, you know, it'll just not be as much responsive as you would want it to be. So one way to do avoid that is that JavaScript gives you the opportunity of firing up certain web workers, right? So these web workers, what they essentially are is they are, they are completely isolated from the UI thread, which is the main thread of your application, and they run in a separate thread. So that means whatever you run over here would not affect main thread performance at all. But at the same time, this web worker also provide you with the asynchronous bridge. This bridge is async, right? That means it is not synchronous in one way. The other meaning of this is that these updates are not guaranteed to happen immediately, right? They might take some time. This bridge over here for communication is asynchronous, right? So whatever calculations, whatever stuff you do in this web worker thread, you can do it. And then whenever you want to communicate it to the UI for updating or, you know, doing anything with the DOM specifically, you would have to communicate those changes up the chain on this thread. So far, so good. If you understand this, you are ready for Party Town. Okay, so now let's just go ahead and try to understand what exactly Party Town does. So what Party Town does is that it, it, it can essentially take up all of these scripts, whichever you say, and it can move the execution of all these scripts from main thread to a web worker, which might seem like an obvious thing to do before this as well, right? Why Party Town exists and why, you know, this makes so much sense now. Now, what Party Town does is something really weird alongside running all these scripts on the web worker. Let's understand what it does. Now, technically speaking, there is no problem in running a script in a UI thread versus a web worker. The only problem is when these script need synchronous access to the DOM, right? This could be window, window dot something this could be document dot something and so on right and remember that because you are running this in a web worker these window document these things are not available even if you want to get access to them you have to cross this asynchronous bridge right and of course if this is asynchronous then you have to patch this code which is running inside these libraries that's not an option right because these libraries are hosted somewhere else and it's very difficult to patch a specific use case and if i'm writing something like document dot get element by id or, or document dot title for example then i expect this value to immediately return me something now how do you make asynchronous calls synchronous this is what these guys figured out with a really weird hack and here it is so if you have used javascript before es5 or es6 i don't know in which fetch was introduced if you have used javascript before official fetch you know that there was something known as xml http request i mean that's uh, it's still available today but what was possible before was that you actually had the option to make synchronous network request and this is what changes everything because before fetch was available you could make synchronous 
That means it will block the thread on which the network request is being made. It is a synchronous network request. That means you can call a resource, for example, slash ABC, slash DEF, and actually wait for the request to go and then come back and you know you have the data with you. And this whole process would actually block your JavaScript execution. Now, this is of course this is disastrous on the main thread, on the UI thread, because if you do something like this, then in this duration, let's say this takes 10 seconds to happen, none of the things would work clicks, user input, scroll, stuff like that. It'll all stop working for the next 10 seconds. But here, over here, what these guys did is that they actually created a synchronous bridge within the library itself. Let me explain you what, what that means. Now, very simply speaking, what happens is that let's say there is a worker over here, right? This worker has to execute a Google Analytics script inside this, you know, inside this another thread and it receives a call which it is proxying somehow, just imagine that. It is receiving all the calls for document. So it gets a call for document.title and it has to return this response synchronously, right? Because we know that this API, the library which is running, it expects you to synchronously return the response. Here's what it will do. It will perform an XML HTTP request to a certain path whatever it is abc whatever i don't know like what the library specifies but this bridge over here this is a synchronous call right to a network it's not to the main thread it's somewhere on the network but again the interesting thing about javascript is that alongside web workers it also gives you the ability to inject a service worker now the beautiful thing about this whole thing is that service workers also do not run on the UI thread, on the main thread, right? They run on separate threads. But what service worker can do is it can intercept this request, right? Because service workers have that ability to intercept the request made. So it intercepts this request over here and now it tries to communicate on this asynchronous bridge. Now remember, in this case, what is happening is that this XML HTTP request which we made, you can think about this service worker as the front-end backend, right? So it's a server, it's a backend server kind of, which is sitting on the front-end itself because it's intercepting the request and it is then forwarding that whatever we need asynchronously to the main thread, right? And then the main thread responds back and it responds back to this service worker and the service worker over here responds to this request. Now, because, because this request was made with XML HTTP request in a synchronous fashion, you have this whole thread or this whole worker was waiting for this request to actually resolve, right? So you have the data with you, you inject it back into the actual script which was requesting it. And of course, all of this is actually wrapped into JavaScript proxies. So JS proxies, which allow you, allow these developers to actually intercept these document dot something calls as well. But this is the way the whole architecture of party down works, which is amazing because thinking about this part where you make an XML request and then intercept it with a service worker and then make an async request where this network request is synchronous, this work is async was genius according to me. It's still very early days for party town but this can have a significant increase in performance if you use a lot of third party scripts on your website of course it's an oversimplification it involves a little bit of more work in setting up the course policies and stuff like that for your whole infra to work properly but if you are able to implement this as a developer it could save a lot of time which your users spend on main thread, right? So it can make your applications much more snappier, responsive, especially for those startups and companies who have, you know, this, this requirement of pushing basically everything inside of a, every single marketing library inside of your website. So yep, that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. That is all for this one. I'm gonna see you in the next video really soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of CodeDamp's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and thank you so much for watching.